Hi everyone. Okay, so I'm catching y'all up on the books that I read in 2020. And this is the second to last book that I completed last year. Um, and the amount of books that I read in 2020 is particularly important to me because I'm not usually a huge reader. I haven't been, even though I buy books, I like them. In fact, let me just to kind of recap, taking you through my house. I love buying books online, but then I realized like, hey, I really truly have to read them. And so what I started telling myself was, okay, uh, I want all this knowledge, all this experience and things for me to consider to go in here. And it's not gonna go in here quickly if I don't prioritize them. So that kind of hit me in the beginning of last year. And so I thought, okay, um, let me put a time uh, management thing on this and kind of get competitive with myself. So I said three books a month. That's going to be my goal. Um, and so one of these books that I read last year uh, was called Sugar Blues by William Dufty. This was actually suggested to me by my friend who's a health coach, like health conscious, a holistic type person just in and out. Um, Sylvia Perry, definitely reach out to her. She's uh, it's a great friend and like bouncing ideas, you know, off of um, off of you when you're talking about health stuff and, and options. Um, but yes, so Sugar Blues by William Dufty um, has been amazing. So I bought it years ago from Powell's Books in Portland. Love that bookstore. If you're a like a reader and you've been to Oregon, you have been to Pell's books. Um, and I knew that I wanted to get this because after talking years ago to Sylvia about this. So I bought it and I started reading it and it is chock full of this guy's personal story and what health wise sort of motivated him to get off sugar, like horrible health stuff. Um, and by the encouragement of a good friend of his, uh, he committed to getting off sugar. But he also goes into the history of sugar, how it's so connected to, you know, the slave trade, the enslavement of kidnapped African people. So um, it ties a lot to capitalism and uh, putting profit over people. So the history of sugar was super fascinating and hard and difficult and scary. And, and then additionally, what it actually does to your body. So I wanna quickly just go over some of the key takeaways. I do recommend this book. It's just fascinating in general. If you're a foodie, uh, a historian, uh, an anti-capitalist, or someone who's just curious in general um, and you care about your health, this is a great read, I will say. It's sort of old school, his language. I mean, this this came out a while ago. This is like, this is a classic um, in sort of the health world. I'm trying to find it. It's like the 60s or something. It came out a long time ago. Um, and so I just recommend it, but with the caveat that some of the language is sort of outdated too. So some of the racial and gendered language in there, um, you know, is just old school, coming from a white guy perspective. However, you can still tell, at least for me, I could still see where he's coming from a compassionate place and, you know, against slavery and, you know, so he, his heart is in the right place as far as I can tell, um, even though I didn't always agree with uh, some of the verbiage that he used. So just as a heads up in that department, I'm, you know, I like to weigh out those things. And so I just wanted to say that um, as a heads up for people that, you know, are uh, caring about that stuff. But okay, so I, number, not in any particular order, but I was fascinated. I did not know that brown sugar and what they market as raw sugar is actually just already processed white crystallized sugar colored by molasses added to the exterior. It's not any less processed. I did not know that. So that was... <laughs> So that, that blew my mind. I, I like told some friends right after I read that and they were like, oh yeah, I knew that. But you know, I don't know. They didn't talk about that in my school. So um, I'm telling you now in case you don't know. Um, so I guess just don't be fooled by that marketing of like, oh, this is more natural because it's darker, but no, not necessarily in Sugar's case. 
Oh my God. And you know, I, I just want to share a quick story. I have spent thousands of dollars on my teeth. And as I do agree that we do in my family have some genetic stuff that is just not great in the dental department. I've spent a lot of money on these and, um, you know, it looks good now and that's awesome. And I'm going to keep on investing in my dental care, but I also want to address my teeth health from the inside out and not always from the outside in. So I got the idea to commit to a sugar-free life. I'm not doing it perfectly, but oh my God, y'all, not only have I read more than I will have ever read if I didn't put that commitment on myself, but I've also eaten a ton less sugar. So that's really exciting. Um, and uh, there's ways to sweeten things that aren't cane sugar. So that's what I'm about and, uh, and it's awesome. Um, okay, so so that's me, but so just some of the key kind of fascinating things I want to be sure to get across, a little bit of history here. We're in a plague right now, right? Like COVID, this is a global issue, health issue and crisis. So you might've heard of back in the day in Europe, the bubonic plague, right? Something that this book talks about. And by the way, just quick hashtag here or like pin uh, in this, he references so many other historic articles and books that cover the history of sugar, like bodies of work that cover sugar. So it, if you want to geek out on this, you can go down that rabbit hole. There's so many references that he capitalizes on to create this accessible, interesting book. Um, and so there's that. But the bubonic plague um, was mainly hitting cities, like in England, right? Like neighborhoods that big, big, more developed cities and downtown metro type areas and not so much the rural people. And like, I, I don't think we hear that part of the story when we hear about the bubonic plague and, and stuff like that, that if folks were out in the country, they had less exposure to sugar in like the day-to-day -day items in downtown and the day-to-day -day food items. So they simply were eating more Whole, like whole foods, right? They were eating, they were eating veggies and, and whole grains and stuff. So folks in rural countryside areas didn't so much get the bubonic plague. So diet was such a huge thing um, in regards to that. So I just thought that that was really fascinating. Um, also back in the day, German doctors first thought that vermin caused scurvy but that it was actually found that folks that were, you know, trying out the sugary foods that were coming out and forgetting to eat more fruits and veggies uh, were actually uh, falling to the, to the scurvy uh, more often. So diet was just clearly affected once sugar was made more accessible and uh, popular. And obviously it's so addictive, right? So he talks about the connection of slavery, racism, um, colonization, um, having kidnapped folks like work Caribbean islands to produce sugar for royalty at first. At first it was just like royalty that had access to sugar. And then they thought, wait, this is easy to turn out and actually make money. It's addictive. We can really capitalize off this. So it was made cheaply and, and widely available. Um, and what I thought was so fascinating was that the number one customer, and this is at the time of this old school book, like that it was written, but number one customer of sugar is the industrial food processors, which makes total sense, right? But that the number two largest customer of sugar in general is the tobacco industry. So uh, tobacco products that have sugar added to them to make it like sweet or whatever are actually more harmful than just straight up or, you know, tobacco products. So that was also really fascinating too. So sugar just inside and out seems to be a load of crap. Uh, anyway, so that was like really fascinating. 
Um, and so when I finished reading this book uh, recently in 2020, I started it years ago, but it was too much for me. I, I wasn't committed enough. But when COVID hit, I asked my body, I just paused. I was like, okay, body, what do you want? What do you need? And uh, I just kind of listened and it said, let's just give up sugar. You know, COVID is kind of unpredictable and out of control and unmanageable, especially in the U.S. Um, you know, so let's just control what we can control and stop eating sugar. And witch huntings and witch burnings, like old school witches, healers, right? Women that know herbs. That's what witches means. Women that know herbs, right? And their own genitalia, God forbid. So uh, they were warning against sugar when it first started hitting the market back in the day. And people were prosecuting them for that as well. So sugar has a dirty bitch ass history and I urge you to learn it. Um, and I love you and let me do this. Old school ingredients that no longer have space in this house. That's the garbage. Okay, I'm not catching it. There we go. That's the garbage right there. Bye sugar. Love y'all.